Hello. It's good to see you. Today, I'm going to catch you up on a little bit of hypothetical, theoretical, alleged possible gossip in my neighborhood. I cover all the bases. I use all the words wrong. I don't care. Hypothetically, I don't care. Some people get mad because I will use the words hypothetical and allegedly and theoretically incorrectly. I know. I don't care. We're going to talk about my neighborhood today. Maybe. Maybe not. <laughs> it's been pretty quiet. I'll be honest. Um, for the last little bit, things were kind of quiet. Well, because it was winter time and you don't see people out and about as much. There's not quite as much activity when it's really cold and yucky outside well you know it's been warming up over the last month or so we've had a, a lovely little period of time here where the weather for the most part was pretty good we we were very fortunate for the most part we had a a fairly mild winter it wasn't it wasn't too bad at all um the only thing that i'm aware of that really kind of got started over the winter that i i have seen myself was there was this company that was going around. Now, we don't allow solicitation. Solicitation is not allowed here. Um, there are signs up everywhere, no solicitation. Uh, they don't care. You know, people come around trying to sell all different kinds of things. I had that, a very, aggress that very aggressive cleaning product sales guy, and he went down the street and got in a shouting match with one of my neighbors because she didn't want to buy anything from him, and he was very aggressive, and... He, we basically kind of had to run him out of the neighborhood, allegedly, because he was just so pushy, very, very pushy. He just, yeah, he, he had to go. I don't think he sold anything to anybody. But so the, these two guys came around. Now, this was back in, I want to say December. I think it was bef either right before or right after Christmas. These two guys came around, and they were selling these kits. Now, I've never heard of this. It, it's a do-it-yourself kit for solar panels, which I don't know that I would want to try to put up my own solar panels and like hook them up and, you know, get into electrical stuff and like and things like that. I just, I don't know how legal it is to do that yourself. Um, I talked to them. I happened to be going out and I happened to be headed out to check the mail when they came down my street and they caught me. Normally, if they ring the doorbell, I just ignore them. But they caught me going out to check my mail, and they said, yes, we have these kits, and we would love to talk to you about uh, solar panels. Are you interested in solar panels for your home? I said, no, I'm not. And I, I've just, I have learned to be a lot more direct with salespeople, um, because if you give them a foot in the door, they will just talk you to death. So I just said, no, I'm not, turned on my heel, and walked straight into the house, and just didn't say another word. But I have some neighbors on a side street over here. We will call them John and Jane. I had to make notes because I can't. It was quiet for a while and then it was like a roller coaster. We got to the top of the hill and it started coming down and it just got crazy. <laughs> there was a couple that lives over on the side street. Now apparently they went for it. They got the do-it-yourself solar panels and with this kit they have been out working like up on the roof trying to put up these solar panels. I thought they were going to fall. I mean, they were just up there. And the few times I saw them up there, I was concerned because it's like, and I'm not saying older people can't do things. I'm not saying that at all. Um, in fact, I have a good example of an, an older person doing something, which I'll tell you about in a little bit. I kind of worry about them because they're, they, they don't look steady up there on the roof. And I know for, for uh, John, then that's not their real names, John has vertigo from time to time, and I just, I mean, I keep wanting to save money because getting solar panels installed and, you know, purchasing them and having them installed can be, it's expensive. Um, I get wanting to save some money, but, I mean, if you fall off your roof and break your back, I don't know that it's worth saving the money on it. Um, but so... Apparently, it was a lot more labor-intensive than they expected it to be. I've talked to them a couple of times, you know, because there, there was this one time I had some uh, flowers around my mailbox, and they had kind of died off, and I was out there kind of picking out all the dead stuff, and I saw them out there, and um, they were up on the roof. Well, John was up on the roof, and Jane, not her real name, she had gone inside, 
and he starts yelling for her like there was something wrong and I, I I mean I could see him you know so I ran over there like you know what do you need help is something wrong well apparently the ladder that he had up against the house had fallen there was a ladder in the back because her backyard is a little bit more like this so the ladder was up against the house and it had fallen and he couldn't get down so I had to go set the ladder back up for him she had gone inside and I guess she couldn't hear him or something so he was trapped up on the roof. So I was talking to him after he came down. And he said, yeah, this has turned out to be such a job. Such a job. I mean, it's, it's a lot of work. And he said there are instructions, but a lot of them aren't even in English. It's in like Portuguese or something. And he had to go online to try to get it translated and figure it out. And he's trying to get in touch with the people from this company. And they're not responding you know, they, they delivered everything, the kits, like this whole big thing that gets delivered to you. And then like they got their stuff and you're supposed to be able to call customer service. But when he calls, he can't get anybody on the phone. <laughs> so they've been trying to figure out the instructions on their own and get it set up. And I just don't know that I would want to do that. You know, when it comes to electrical stuff, I don't know if I would want to just wing it, especially if I have no experience with that kind of thing. I don't see how they can legally sell these kits. I mean, there's no oversight. Well, they do say you're supposed to have this, like, I think there's a city. I don't, they have to get the city to come out and inspect it before you hook it up or something. And they're going to end up having to hire an electrician to get everything finished. I, I just don't think they're going to be able to actually do it. The He said that the kit... And the salesman make it sound like this is a super easy, like, plug-and-play thing. You know, all you have to do is get up there and mount stuff on the roof and, you know, basically just hook it up and you're done. No big deal. There's no need to pay thousands of dollars to have that done. And he said it turned out to be a lot harder than they ex described it. So, but they've got the solar panels up, but I don't think they're hooked up yet. I think they decided to stop and get somebody else to finish the job. Ultimately, according to John, ultimately, this may end up being even more expensive because they had one guy come out and look at what they had done. And apparently some of the stuff they did, they didn't do it right. And it's going to have to be taken down and redone. So ultimately, it might end up being more expensive than if they had just had a company come out and install them. So he's very upset. He's tried to talk to people at the company about maybe getting at least a partial refund because it has been such a nightmare, but I don't know, don't know what kind of luck they're going to have getting that. It's kind of like, you know, I'm a patent paralegal. It's kind of like when you file your own patent application. Um, sometimes when you do it yourself from the start, you, you make mistakes, you don't realize you're making mistakes that have to go back and be undone and fixed and you end up having to hire a patent attorney to do it and it ends up being more expensive than if they had just prepared it and filed it to start with. Um, you know, I, I get wanting to save money, but sometimes when you do try to do it yourself, it ends up costing more <laughs> on down the road. So it's just hard to say. And the Homeowners Association has to come out and approve it. I've seen the the homeowners, the HOA lady, like I think she's like the director. I'm not, I don't know what her title is, but she's been here a lot in the last month. <laughs> so she had to come out and look at the solar panels. Um, and I think part of the review for the HOA, I think they just have to confirm that the city is involved. Everybody has to communicate with one another about that. I don't know, like I say, I'm, I'm not intimately involved in the process, but I, I know the HOA lady's car and I know when she's in the area. Um, we'll call the HOA lady, we'll call her Janice. Okay, so Janice, I first met Janice because of another neighbor that I have who has some issues. Um, I don't know what they are, but she's the one who ripped up Miss Margaret's flowers. Um, she has screamed at me. She has screamed at my kids. She just randomly screams at people and says she's the one that came and yelled at me when I was out watering my yard. And I have dealt with her numerous times. Over Christmas, there was an incident with the, the lady with issues. Um, she, uh, got mad. She, okay. The lady with issues had put up a sign on her mailbox I don't know what, I don't know where she got it. I don't know if she made it. It was this great big sign 
and it had a Christmas tree on it with it was like a little a little elf or something like one of Santa's elves or whatever peeking out from behind the tree flipping you off like giving you the bird and it said Merry effing Christmas but it wasn't effing it was like you know great big letters and I guess the HOA people were alerted you know like look she's got this big sign up and it's it's right I mean you know and you can't put stuff like that up you know you cannot put up things with offensive language on them like why would you do that so the HOA, so Janice had to go talk to her, like, you have to take this down. Well, the lady with issues said, I'm not taking the sign down. Well, we have, we have great big oversized mailboxes. Part of the neighborhood does. Like, these two streets here, my street and her street, have these big mailboxes. So this sign, I'm not kidding, from the ground up, this sign is probably four feet high and maybe two and a half feet wide. It's, it's big. I mean, you can't miss it. And she said, I'm not taking it down, you know, I, I, it's, it's, it, me, it has sentimental value or like she gave some BS reason for why she wasn't going to take it down. So Janice said, well, at the very least, you have to cover up the profanity that you cannot, you know, you're going to have to cover it with something. So she agreed to. So the first time she covered it up, hypothetically, she covered it with like this sheer scarf. Like you could still read it. She said, well, it's covered up. And somebody called you. I'm not the one calling, okay? I'm not like somebody to report everybody for everything. But she must have been called again because I saw Janice's car out there again. And uh, she said, yeah, you're, you're going to have to cover it with something better than that. You can still read the word. She's like, well, it's covered up. Well, it's not good enough. You're going to have to cover it with something more than that. So she agreed to do it. But then the lady with issues was just really just mad that she had to do anything. So as retaliation for that, she went and got two cans or multiple cans of spray paint. She had red spray paint and green spray, spray paint. And as high up as she could reach, she just spray painted squiggles in red and green all around her house. And she spray painted the driveway. She spray painted her lawn. I mean, it was just red and green squiggles everywhere. She spray painted the inside of her mailbox, not the outside, just the inside of the mailbox. She spray painted her, her recycle bin, her trash can, the wheelie can, everything she spray painted red and green. Well, there's not, I don't think there's really anything the homeowners association can do about it. Like, you know, it's not pretty to look at, but they can't stop her from doing that. She even spray painted over her bay window. Like, what are you, what? So, um, I got to look at that every day coming and going because I have to go right by her house to turn to get to my street. And it's, it's almost April and the merry effing Christmas sign is still up. I don't know when she plans to take it down or if she plans to take it down. Um, she did cover up most of the sign with a pile of, it's like um, Christmas garland, like fake uh, pine garland. She has taken a bunch of it and wadded it up into this giant ball and put it in front of the sign. So the sign is still there. You can barely see the elf's little middle finger sticking up above the clump of garland and the scarf is still covering up the, the you know, the profanity. It's, I guess that's like her stubborn way of saying, I don't want to take it down. I don't care if Christmas is long over. I just refuse because I was told to take it down and I'm not going to. I don't know. She's been pretty quiet. Um, I don't I don't know if, uh, if I mentioned she threatened to kill me. There was a threat. Hypothetically, there was a, a death threat. And um, she went away for a few days, 72 hours, and then she came back and she was remarkably quiet after that. But she has now decided to just start decorating her, her house. Um, she scraped the red and green paint off the bay window so she can see out. Um, and then she took a can of like silver spray paint and spray painted her entire driveway silver. It's, it's, it basically every time I go by there hypothetically something is a different color like she spray painted something else another color she keeps spray painting her mailbox um, she has spray painted her bushes in front of the house and it's 
it's always interesting, but she's been very quiet. She hasn't said anything else to me. Um, Miss Margaret hypothetically had to get a restraining order because she kept going down there. Of course, as I mentioned, she went into Miss Margaret's yard and was ripping up her flowers. And she, we had to go to uh, like small claims court to get so she could be reimbursed for that. And she was. Um, and then she got a restraining order. So she can't come within a certain distance of her house, but she'll go to the very edge as close as she can and just yell at her. Um, poor Miss Mart, she hypothetically, she's been very stressed. She put up a fence like around her house now, and it's very sad because she said, "I don't, I don't like feeling like I'm I, like I'm a prisoner in my own house, like I like I'm in prison, like I have to put up a big fence because she's afraid of her." Um, even with the restraining order, hypothetically, she's still concerned about her. It's been, it's, it's been, it's been interesting. Um, yeah, so back, let's see, when was this? This was back before Christmas. I had several large trees taken down in my, in my backyard. And I didn't realize before I had them taken down how much better I would be able to see. Like, I didn't realize how much they were blocking out until I had them cut and had them cut down. I do have my wall of FU trees up, <laughs> hypothetically. I did, um, so I won't have to look at my neighbors over here. I do, and, and they're, it's gonna take a while for them to fill in, but I have a row of trees now planted there to fill in and make a nice big wall eventually. But the interesting thing about it is that now from my backyard, you can see the back of Tripp's house, hypothetically. Now Tripp, I, that's not his real name. I don't know this guy's name. He lives with his parents. He's, at this point, he's probably in his late 20s, early 30s. I'm not exactly sure how old he is. It's kind of hard to tell. He looks different depending on how he's dressed. Sometimes he dresses like Marky Mark from about 1991, and sometimes he dresses like a, you know, like an adult, like he'll have on like a suit and stuff. I don't know what he does exactly. Um, I know he has a very, very nice car. He has a Tesla, which he has had now for theoretically for at least a year. Um, he has a really nice truck. And um, he also has the wing wing bike, which I mentioned. It's one of those little crotch rocket streak bikes. It goes wing, 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 wing. He has one of those. And he had the Vroom Vroom bike. Now the Vroom Vroom bike, I think he must have finally given up on that. That bike was the one he tried and tried and tried to get it to run. He would work on it in their driveway. He would get mad at it. He would beat it with a wrench and then he would throw his tools and then his dad would come out and yell at him and tell him to calm down. Use your words. What? Why? You're talking to him like he's eight. You know, use your words, Trip. Use your words. What tell me communicate what's wrong. I can't fix my effing bike. That's what's wrong now. Now now calm down. Well, I think he must have finally given up on it because he never got it to run. It would never he, the best he did, hypothetically, was get it started and get it like not even a quarter of a mile down the road and then it would die and he would have to roll it back and he's cussing the whole way. He's so mad. He had to roll it back to the house because he couldn't get it started again. And there was this one day he kept, and it was a very, very loud motorcycle. I don't know what kind it was, but it was really loud. He would get it started and, and just rev it and rev it and just wind it up, you know, and it was really loud and it would backfire and it was like, sounded like gunshots and like super loud. And one day this went on for hours, hypothetically, and I, I I mentioned this previously this this was actually this was really funny this went on for hours I mean it was a Saturday it went on from probably 8 o'clock in the morning until after lunch I'm talking to like 3 or 4 in the afternoon he was out there constant racket and my older son got sick of it he was in his room he was trying to study he had an exam or something coming up he was trying to study he's like mom I cannot hear myself think for that stupid motorcycle I said well I don't know what to tell you Put in some earbuds or something, earplugs or whatever. And so he, he got mad, and we have this speaker with a microphone that I use for the family reunion I head up. 
He said, can I borrow that? It was up in the attic. I said, yeah, I guess. He, he took it into his room. He opened one of his windows in his room and he set the speaker in the window. <laughs> he got his phone out. He pulled up the song, the song Let It Go from Frozen and he stuck the microphone right <laughs> And he just played Let It Go at full blast. And then he played like the Barney theme song, I Love You, You Love Me. And Trap could hear it. And he was going, shut that shit off. And my son goes, I don't think so. And he just kept playing. He finally gave up. It got him to stop. Maybe he was going to stop anyway. But it, theoretically, it got him to stop winding that stupid motorcycle up and driving everybody crazy. But I think he must have gotten rid of it because I haven't seen it or heard it so far in the last, he's, he's been out and about more in the last month or so. And I, I've seen the wing wing bike. He's, he's, he's come and gone on it several times. I have not seen or heard the vroom vroom bike. So I think he gave up on it or gave it away or sold it or something. I don't think he has it anymore, thank God. Well, he's doing this thing with the wing wing bike hypothetically. Now, I've told you in the past he would do this thing, and I really only know about it hypothetically because my kids would, their bus stop is where they can see his driveway, and he would do this in the mornings, and they told me about it. They said it's hilarious. I saw it myself a couple of times. He would get his bike out, his motorcycle out, and he would set it up in the driveway, and he would pose on it and just like take pictures of himself on the bike, you know, and then he would put the bike up and just go back in the house. And it was, this was back when he hardly ever even rode it. He just got it out to take pictures of himself. And then he put it, he put it away. Well, he's doing something else with it now. And I don't know if this is a thing because I'm old and I don't keep up with stuff. Um, I, I don't do anything with TikTok or anything like that. Don't really know anything about it. Don't really want to know anything about it. Um, I think it's killing people's attention spans, and it's I think it's spyware, and I think it's horrible, to be honest. That's just my opinion of TikTok. I, it's not to say I would never do it, but I just don't know that it's good for you. Um, anyway, I think he's doing stuff on TikTok. Now, I could be wrong, and I don't know the guy's name. Trip is not his name. He just looks like his name should be Trip with two Ps. And his dad calls him sport or something like that. He just has that look about him. You know, he's like that that guy you went to high school with who was vaguely obnoxious and played basketball or, you know, lacrosse or whatever. He was just sort of vaguely annoying, but he never grew out of it. Yeah, that's Trip. Well, he's doing this thing. Um, okay, so he sets up his phone. He's got it out there on like a tripod or something. He he gets the the wing wing bike out and he'll 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 prop it up in the driveway, and he's like, and and I only know this because now I can see him because I had the trees cut. I can now have a clear view of his driveway from my backyard. And I was out there theoretically mowing the other day, and I happen to look over and Trip is in his driveway with the motorcycle, and he has his tripod set up with his camera. It's like his phone on it, and he is like caressing the handles and kissing the handlebars and then he'll do this weird little dance around the motorcycle and then he'll go fiddle with the phone and then he'll do something else like he'll just rub the handlebars and he's always kissing the motorcycle and like swaying around it seductively and then he'll stop it and he'll like adjust the, the little foam you know and the tripod and he'll move it over here and I'm just in my backyard like what is he doing? Like, I'm not trying to be nosy, but if you're going to do that where I can see you, hypothetically, I'm going to watch because, like, this is weird. I Maybe it's a thing people do. They, they caress their vehicles on some social media platform. I don't know. I don't know if it's TikTok. He's got the phone up like this. And maybe it's not. Maybe he's just doing it for his own enjoyment. Maybe he just keeps those videos to watch later when he's in the bed. And I, I don't know. I, I really don't know. Maybe he has a relationship with his motorcycle. I did see a video once where a guy was had a, his car was his girlfriend. And like, I don't know. I don't know what this guy's deal is. But I was out there mowing the yard, hypothetically, the backyard. And I, I happened to look up and there he is, like 
fondling his motorcycle, making a video of it. I, it's, I don't, like I say, I don't understand what people do. There may be some trend I'm not aware of, but that's what Trip has been up to. Okay, Joe, I gotta tell you about Joe. Everybody has come out. I mean, since as, as long as like the weather's gotten warm, everybody's coming outside and I'm seeing my neighbors for the first time in months, you know, like, hey, how you doing? Um, all right, so Joe over here. So if you don't know about Joe, hypothetically, my next door neighbor right here bought this house from his nephew. He won the lottery. I don't know exactly how much he won hypothetically, but he won the lottery and he bought this house from his nephew a few years ago. Well, okay, Joe has two young ladies living with him. Originally, I referred to them as itchy and scratchy. Well, there must have been some sort of falling out because scratchy moved out probably, gosh, it's probably been a year now. It's, well, it's been at least a year since she moved out. And then an even younger lady, she's like maybe 20, moved in. And I refer to her as Scratchy 2.0 because she's like the replacement Scratchy. <laughs> the first one, I guess, just moved on and she got replaced by a new Scratchy. That's not their real names, obviously. Well, Joe over here, has he's, very, he's been very interested in what's been going on at my house because I have been having some home repair, uh, home improvement type stuff done. And he, he asked me recently, I think I mentioned this on my vlog channel, he did ask me about my electric lawnmower. You know, I have an electric lawnmower. I've had, I've used electric lawnmowers for years. And he always made fun of my lawnmower, you know, like, oh, isn't it adorable? It looks like it should have bubbles coming out of it. And you know, let me know if you ever want to get a real lawnmower, you know. Well, there was a day, um, hypothetically, this was like a week or two ago, he came back from filling up some gas cans for his lawnmower and um, he has a gas-powered lawnmower and a gas-powered weed eater, and he was just cussing up a storm. He was so mad at how much gas was. And all of a sudden, my lawnmower, my little corded electric mower, wasn't so funny anymore. He actually asked me where I got it. <laughs> and so I got it on Amazon for like 200 bucks, and it's this is the fifth summer I've used it now. Well, no, the fourth. I had a smaller one before. Anyway, so yeah. Of course, if he gets an electric lawnmower, I'm sure it will be way better and way nicer than mine, and he will be very happy to show me and explain how it is definitely superior to mine. Because he's just like one of these show-offs, you know, he's got to always have something bigger and better than everybody else and more expensive and like, oh, I paid a lot for this. <laughs> you don't want to know how much. I'm like, I'm not even interested to start with, so I really don't want to know how much you paid for it. He likes to humble brag about how much money he has, how much money he spends, and it's it's tiresome. I mean, I think I know why Itchy and Scratchy are there. I don't think they're there because of his personality. That's just my opinion, hypothetically. I'm not one to judge. Well, yeah, I am. He has a new business venture, hypothetically, Joe does. And this was another reason that Janice from the Homeowners Association was here because he had to get approval for this. He wanted to buy an ice cream truck and he wants to park it at his house. Well, it won't fit in his garage because it's too big. So he has to get approval to park it on the street. Well, Janice was not very happy about it. She said, I, you know, we really don't allow that here. Like say, if you were a truck driver, you can't park your rig here. You're gonna have to find somewhere else to put it. You cannot park it in the neighborhood. Um, and this ice cream truck is kind of big. Like it's bigger than the average. It's, it's just seems, but of course, if Joe's gonna have it, it's gotta be bigger and better and flashier and more expensive than everyone else's. That's just, he thinks everything is a contest. And I don't know if it's because he has like deep-seated self-esteem issues. I don't really know. Um, but it's like he thinks everything's a contest and he has to be the best at everything. Well, she told him he had, he could park it here, but only during certain hours and that he can't leave it here for more than 48 hours consecutively. So I think he's going to have to look into some other place to store it. But he had it here the other day. He went ahead and bought it. And his plan is to start driving it around to, you know, like things have opened back up, like we're having festivals and things at the parks around here and events. And his thing is to drive it around in the neighborhood when there's nothing going on, go to different neighborhoods 
and you know then when there's an, an event he can take it there and stuff like that so I mean that's cool you know he wants something to do he said he's bored and he doesn't really he doesn't work like he doesn't have a job and he wanted something to do he said I want to get out and you know do stuff so he bought this ice cream truck and the, the paint job on it hypothetically was really bad so he got it repainted of course it was very expensive because a lot of it had to be hand done great expense to me but that's okay I can afford it <laughs> you know I didn't know what kind of design he was gonna paint on it didn't expect what he saw what I saw when he brought it here after having it repainted because he had it here for a day or so and the paint was all chipped off and faded and just sad looking like I would not want to approach this truck to buy anything looks like they would snatch you and take you away very shady looking tr uh, truck he brought it back and it had the craziest paint job like wild tie-dyed swirls and he had a name spray painted on both sides big worms ice cream truck like from the movie Friday big worm hypothetically he now is big worm he's he bought this wig slash visor he bought a curly wig with a visor that he's gonna wear like he wants to look like Big Worm from the movie Friday. What? The, like, I don't know what possessed him to do that. I, and I asked him, I said, do, do you know what? I, first of all, because he, he came over, he wanted me to see it. And my, my younger son was out there looking at it. So I went out and he said, what do you think of the name of my, my truck? You know, allegedly. And I said, well, did, uh, how'd you pick that name? I just thought I'd start there. He said, oh, you don't know, do you? I said, no, I know. I'm just checking to see if you know. He said, what do you know? I said, what do you know? He said, well, I know what I know. I'm thinking we could be here all day. I said, did you get that from the movie Friday? He said, yes, I did. I said, now, are you betting on people knowing what that is or not knowing what that is? Because you know what Big Worm was selling, right? And he said, well, well, no, I just thought it was funny. People will find it funny. I said, well, I reckon. But we'll see how it goes. Theoretically, he's taking it out. There, There is some kind of festival that he's taking it to. Not, not in Greensboro, somewhere out of town. There's some kind of festival going on this weekend. He's going to take it there. And he said he was going to report back and let me know how it was going hypothetically. So we got Big Worm's ice cream truck. And all the kids in the neighborhood were excited. Of course, they don't know anything about it. Like, yeah, he's going to sell you some chili Fritos and then <laughs> keep your money and not give them to you. <laughs> so we've we've got that. Um, and Scratchy 2.0, is she's concerned. She's so worried. Because uh, theoretically, I, she was, I think it was either her or Itchy, I don't remember who it was, came over, you know, asked me one day, are you moving? I mean, you've had a lot of work done on your house. See what I've been doing for the last four four years or so I've been in this house since the summer of 2017 for about the last four years whenever I can afford it I've, I've been getting work done on the house inside and outside just all kinds of stuff that needs to be fixed or replaced just as I can afford it I've been doing it so you're bound to see any any kind of work being done at any given time well, it was itchy or scratchy. It was really concerned one day, and she saw me outside in the backyard. She said, are you planning to sell your house? It seems like you've always got somebody over here fixing something. And I said, no, I, I'm just, you know, the house needed a little bit of work. I've been trying to do it, you know, a little bit as long as I can. And she said, oh, good. I thought you were going to sell. I, I hate to lose you as a neighbor. You're so quiet, you know. And, and I am. I'm a quiet neighbor. And, and she was walking, and she was she joe or the other one the other girl the other lady were were nearby and she turned and said i told you she wasn't moving you know she is always so and then she got in the house and shut the door and i to this day i have no idea what i am always so i'm always so what what i, I don't know i didn't hear the end of it i, I didn't hear the end of the sentence so I, i'm just going to assume it was a good thing you know she is always so nice I'm assuming it was that, but I don't know. So there's always part of me that's going, well, it could have been something awful, but I don't know. But she came over again because right now, theoretically, I'm having my siding 
redone. I have masonite on my house and it's crumbling. If you know anything about masonite, it's awful. Well, the masonite on my house is about 30 years old and it has literally just started to crumble off the house and it has to come off and be replaced. Well, I'm working on getting that replaced and I had a big delivery of the new stuff delivered to my house yesterday and they had to put it in my, like part of it's in my driveway, part of it's in the front of the house, part of it's in the back and Scratchy 2.0 I had that I was had that going on now last week I got my shutters replaced on the front of my house and she saw the guy that was here working on that his truck was in my driveway for two whole days because it for some reason it, it was he had a lot of trouble getting the side the shutters down and getting the new ones up and he would work for a while and then he'd have to leave and come back and I think he had something else going on she thought I had a new boyfriend she said who's your who's your new man I've seen you know I've seen that truck that truck in your driveway oh what you got going on like nothing I just got my like if you looked you would have seen what he was doing and then she thought he was also doing my siding I said no 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 that's a different company doing that and she said are you sure you're not going to sell because it seems like you're doing an awful lot to this house and I said well it's masonite it's got to come down and she's still so worried that I'm going to move I don't know why if that was the one, I don't know if she, was it, I can't remember if it was her that asked me the first time or not. But she was concerned about it. And it's a small world, theoretically. My neighbors, I have neighbors right here on the other side of the street from me. Now, they had the, that, they are the ones that rented the house out. And it ended up like the people that were living there were theoretically selling drugs out of the house. And I kind of wondered about that because people would just come and go from this house all the time. And it's not the typical kind of thing you see in this neighborhood. Just like all kinds of different people. It was just different people all day long coming and going from the house. And uh, so then they rented it to a clown, literally, who had hypothetically was building something suspicious in the basement. They had to, like, decontaminate the house. And there was a hazmat crew and... Lots of tarps, lots of tarps, and barrels in the backyard, and I don't know what went on. The guy was literally a clown, like he was a clown. That was his job. He was a professional clown, like John Wayne Gacy. I don't think he killed anybody, though, theoretically. Well, the owners moved back into the house and fixed it up and made it nice. Right here, hypothetically, on the other side of the street from me. And they're really nice and very quiet. Unfortunately... Hypothetically, they have family down in Florida, and they're looking to move to Florida to be closer to some of their family. And they have a family member that wants to sell a house down there, and they're looking to buy that house. And so, I hate to lose them as neighbors, because they're actually really, really great, really quiet. And um, But it looks like, okay, they're thinking about moving to Florida, but it might not be permanent. They're not sure if they want to stay or not. They're going to go down there and see how it is. Keep this house up here, but rent it out for the time being so it's not sitting empty. And they get a little rental income out of it. So they're going to go down there and buy the house, see how they feel about it, and see if they want to stay or not. Guess who's interested in renting the house? I only know about this because she came by and I saw that unmistakable vehicle. Scratchy 1.0. The original Scratchy is interested in renting that house. Now, what are the odds that she would end up right back on the street where she was before? So if she, if she rents this house, they're going to be like catty corner to one another. They won't be directly in front of each other, but they'll be right there. Now, I don't know if they know, but her pink Jeep was parked in front of the house. And that's when I found out she was thinking about renting the house because I saw her Jeep and I said, oh my God, that's the original Scratchy. Oh my gosh. And at first I wondered why her Jeep was parked there theoretically. Like, what is she doing over there? Is she, and I thought, is she stalking these people? Is she spying on them? Because that's kind of stupid. I mean, your, your Jeep is clearly visible. They're going to see it. I think she wanted them to see it. I think she wants to rent this house to cause problems. Now, I don't, I don't know that for sure. I don't know. Maybe, maybe the four of them get along fine. Maybe there'll be no, maybe there'll be no beef, no problem. But it's looking like she may be the one that rents this house right back 
like right across the street from me. I don't want any trouble. I'm not looking for trouble, but I'm wondering if she is. Like, why do you have to live right here? Although to be fair, rental properties in Greensboro are really hard to come by right now. Um, and if you want to buy a house, good luck. Cause I have a friend who's a realtor here in Greensboro and it's like, yeah, good, good luck. If you want to buy a house, <laughs> like, unless you have tons and tons of money just laying around, like you just cannot buy a house right now. It's just awful. And it's like that basically everywhere. It sucks. I'm so glad I have a house already. Um, yeah, every homeowner, you get approached constantly by all these companies trying to buy your house. It's so annoying. Like, give me a million dollars, you can have it. Otherwise, no, because where am I going to go? I would have to buy an overpriced house. No, thank you. I'm good right where I am. So it could be. I don't know when they're planning on moving, but I think it's going to be relatively soon if they're already interviewing people to rent the house. So Scratchy 1.0 could end up living right here. And I'm thinking if there was ever any tension at all, it's going to bubble back to the surface because she's, I think she's moving over there just to cause problems, honestly. I think she's looking for trouble or drama or something. Um, I don't know. I'm kind of curious to see how that works out, though. So theoretically, that might be something that later on becomes a problem. I don't know. They, they had a dispute, and this is one reason why I think theoretically there might be a problem later. When she moved out, there was a big kerfuffle over Funko Pops. Because she theoretically had this gigantic Funko Pops collection. And when she moved out, Joe wouldn't let her have them. Because he claimed that she bought them with his money. So that made them his Funko Pops. But she said they were a gift. And if they are a gift, then they are her property. But she could not. He said, well, you can't prove that I gave them to you. So you can't have them. And they ended up having to go to court. And they both... Well, Joe in particular wanted me to go to court and testify as a character witness, hypothetically. I said, you know, I'm not going to get involved because honestly, I don't know anything about y'all to the point that I could testify, you know, swear to your character or anything like that. So he wanted me to be a character witness. Um, I don't know how that all worked out, but if there are any hard feelings, it's going to come up again. If she if she's living like right there and they're just... Um, I wish, honestly, she would find somewhere else to live. I just think it's really weird that she would happen to end up right here. I don't think it's a coincidence at all. Um, so I was going to tell you about an older person um, being active or finding, you know, finding something cool or new. I was talking about the, the solar panel folks. Miss Margaret. Now, I have, if you don't know Miss Margaret, hypothetically, I have a neighbor on down the street here. An older lady, her name is, that's not her real name, but we call her Miss Margaret. She's the one that had the problem with the neighbor with issues. She, um, she told me at the beginning of the year that her only New Year's resolution this year was to shake her booty. She said, I'm going to shake my booty this year. I said, are you really? She said, yes, I am. I'm going to be more active. I'm going to get out. And she was going to get out and start walking more, like walking around the neighborhood and stuff. But she's concerned about this lady up here. Although the lady has been banned from all the common areas, like any kind of the gazebo she can't go to, the park, you know, it's like, community property so but she's still concerned about her so she doesn't really want to walk in the neighborhood because she's afraid that the lady theoretically might harass her so but she she told me the other day I saw her she was out checking her mail and I was mowing the yard and I saw her down there and I went down there to say hey to her and she said you won't believe what I did I finally started on my my new year's resolution a little late but better late than never I said what'd you do I said, you still shaking, you still, does it involve shaking your booty? She said, oh, yes. Oh, yes. And she, she was so excited. She said, oh, yes. I've discovered Zumba. She was so excited. I've discovered Zumba. Like, it's just this new thing. Like, oh, did you now? She said, yes. I went to a Zumba class and I got to shake my booty. She was so proud of herself. She said, but I've got to get some clothes. I've got to get some, 
some good workout clothes and I need some shoes that are good for Zumba. Do you know what kind of shoes I should get? I said, well, not really. I, I don't really know a lot about Zumba. I can't really, I don't know, you know, what to tell you. So she said, well, I went to Hamrick's and I, 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 their, their workout clothes won't do. They have the worst workout clothes. I need, I need workout clothes for me. These clothes won't fit me. These are made for young, skinny people. I can't wear their workout clothes. So she's been trying to figure out what kind of workout clothes would work for her. And I told her I would do a little research on it and try to find something for her. And I looked around online and I tried to find like active wear for seniors because she's she's close to 80, I'd be willing to bet. She's yeah, so but she said she's taking it easy. Her doctor gave her gave her the all clear to do Zumba. Just don't go crazy with it. Don't don't get too wound up in there. But she loves her Zumba. Oh my goodness. Because now that's all she can talk about. Because she just loves her Zumba. And I don't know how long that'll last, hypothetically. She might get tired of it. I'm afraid she's going to hurt herself. Like break a hip or throw her back out. Or Lord, I don't know. But she's, she's very excited right now to be doing her Zumba. She does it twice a week. And that is her activity. And she's thought about starting to go bowling and I don't, I don't know how successful that's going to be. She, there's a seniors bowling club in town that she's thought about joining where they go meet at different bowling alleys and go bowling and then they'll go get lunch or something. And uh, so she's working on Zumba, which I would have never expected. You know, like maybe the Silver Sneakers program. You know, start out slow. Just start out with Silver Sneakers. Do that for a while and then work your way up to it. But no, she just jumped in head first to Zumba. All right then. You, uh, you may be wondering about the dudes in trucks. What's happened with the dudes in the trucks? Well, now we have had various adventures with the dudes in trucks. Hypothetically, it started out on a road towards my son's school and every morning I would drive through there and there'd be all these pickup trucks parked on either side of the road and all these dudes like 30 20 30 dudes all out standing around this big hole in a field just looking at the hole drinking coffee and talking to one another dudes in trucks and I wondered what they were doing they were out there in their hard hats drinking their coffee looking down in the hole and all I ever got out of them, I stopped one time and asked one, like, what are y'all doing? You've been out here for weeks. What are, what are y'all doing out here? And all he, would, he, all he would say was, we're with the pipeline, ma'am. And that's the only answer I ever got. They were with the pipeline. Well, the dudes in trucks have been in several other parts of town. I have seen them. Now, they are now, the dudes in trucks are probably about three miles away. It's the same dudes in the same trucks. Now, there is a new housing development being built, and I've seen the dudes in trucks out there. They've got this big area cleared out where they're going to be building, like, single-family homes and stuff. And I've seen the dudes in trucks out there, and they have built... There's another big hole out there. I mean, just a giant hole in the middle. And I, I'm assuming that's not where a house is going. It's not even, like, a basement or anything. It's just this massive hole... Dudes are out there, and again, they're looking. Their job, I guess, is just to look at the hole. I don't mean that dirty. I mean it's like a literal hole in the ground. And so I, I went by there one day, and there was one. There was a dude walking out to his truck to get something, and I, I stopped him and I said, "Hey, I, I see this as a housing development." He said, "Yes, ma'am." I said, "But y'all, aren't y'all the same ones that were on this other road, like a, a couple of years ago?" And there was a big hole out there, and I recognized the guy. I remember this guy because he had a very specific, his hair color is unique. It's like a strawberry blonde, and it's kind of long, and his hard hat has like a four-leaf clover on it. And I remember the hard hat, and I remember the hair. He still had the same kind of longish hair. Very distinct looking guy. And he goes, no, ma'am, that wasn't us. I don't know what you're talking about. I don't know anything about that. I said, I, I know I saw you out there. He said, no, you didn't. And then he just sat there and looked at me. He just stood there and looked at me theoretically, and that was all he had to say about that. I said, so you're working on this here? Yes, ma'am. 
What is that big hole? He said, it might be a swimming pool. It might, it might be a swim, you don't know if it's a swimming pool or not. He said it might be. And then he just walked off. This is the strangest group of people I have ever seen. So, I mean, they're, they're, it's not all the dudes and not all the trucks. It's maybe half the dudes and half the trucks on, on the road up there where they're building the, doing the housing development. There's just something very strange, theoretically, about these dudes. I just, I, they keep popping up here and there and everywhere. I'm starting to think I'm crazy. But theoretically, they are. I mean, I, I know that guy. I know that guy from the original time that I saw the dudes in trucks. He was one of the dudes, and it was his truck. I recognized him because the hair and the hat. But I don't know. I don't know. He wouldn't give me much information. The last thing I have to tell you hypothetically is what happened with, okay, so I told you about the issue I had last fall with the, the lady over here on the other side of my fence because our backyard's kind of butt up like that and there's a fence right there. She was growing stuff in these big totes like just big plastic containers. She had them shoved up against the fence and it was these weird little pepper things and she was flopping them over the fence into my yard. And I told her repeatedly like, can you please get this you know, back on your side of the fence because these, these plants are growing over into my yard. Could you please move them? And she would move them for like a day and then she would flop them back over the fence. And then one day I just got tired of it and I went out there and started cutting them off and there was a whole big kerfuffle over that. And I called her trying to steal my bags of trash, theoretically, out of my driveway. The whole big mess. Okay, hypothetically, after that, she has had really nothing to say to me. She won't speak to me. She won't look at me. Not that we were friends before, not that we were like buddies or anything. Ever since then, she has started piling up compost, leaves, trash. She's got these old boards. She put boards up against her side of the fence and it goes up, I'd say at least a foot and a half up the fence, maybe close to two feet in some areas piled up leaves. She bought big bags of like cow manure, put that there, compost, anything she can get. And she's like mounding it up on her side of the fence, like a big dam on her side of the fence. And she did that all the way across. There's this one area in my backyard where the ground kind of dips down a little bit. And when it rains, the water would come down kind of in that, that area and it would drain off and it would have to go, it has to kind of drain off this way. And her yard kind of does the same thing where it kind of just drains down, you know, and it just goes on down the hill. There's a creek down there and it goes on down to the creek. Well, now that she has put all that junk up on her side of the fence, the water has nowhere to go. So now my whole backyard looks like a lake when it rains, hypothetically. And it's not good for my FU trees that I planted back there and spent a considerable amount of money on because I had to get two big trees removed and I have seven F, F, they're called, that's not what they're actually called, but I was hypothetically telling my hairdresser about my, my issue with my neighbor and she said, oh, you just need a wall of FU trees back there. She didn't call them FU trees, but <laughs> yeah, she's a lot like Lynette. She said, you just need a wall of FU trees back there. And that's what I got. I have like seven of them. Well, it's drowning my FU trees. It's Theoretically, it's making it hard on my FU trees because now that water has nowhere to go. Well, I contacted the Homeowners Association about it, and initially, they didn't want to get involved. They said, well, why don't you just talk to her and explain the problem? I said, I can't talk to her. She's doing it on purpose. She deliberately did that. And I said, "Can you? Can, or is she allowed to do that? And hypothetically, the, the homeowners, Janice with the HOA said, well, no, she's not. But we try to stay out of, you know, disputes between neighbors and the community. I'm like, well, then what is the purpose? What is your purpose? What do you do? She said, well, I'll talk to her if you want me to. I said, I would appreciate it because if I have to talk to her, it's going to turn into a big old problem because she already hates my guts for not allowing her plants to grow in my yard. So 
she went and talked to the neighbor back there hypothetically and didn't get anywhere. And apparently the lady over there told her, well, it's all natural materials. You can't make me remove it. It's all biodegradable. It's not like I'm putting up plastic or anything. This is all biodegradable material and it's my side of the fence. And if I want to pile it up with dirt and manure and compost, I can. So I ended up having to go to the city hypothetically and talk to them about it. And they finally intervened and said, you cannot, you cannot obstruct that. You know, you, you can't do that. So she's had to pull it down, all the junk that she piled up there. And now she's mad at me and tried to say that I have to pay to remove all that stuff. Somehow it was my fault that she had to remove it hypothetically. And she tried to say, she came to my door and gave me a bill. She had written out a bill and said, this is your bill for my, my landscaping work that I'm going to have to have done now. She tried to say I owed her $800 hypothetically to remove all the stuff that she had piled up against the fence. And I said, I will not be paying that. And that was the last I've heard of it hypothetically. And she did remove it, and finally my water can drain again, but that, that took forever to resolve. This went up, I had to go around and around for weeks to get anywhere with this. And we've had a lot of rain in the last few weeks, and it's been, it's been crazy. So she's, she's very unhappy with me. She thought this was a good way to get back at me hypothetically for not allowing her plants to grow over the fence into my yard. So she's just very unhappy. And she doesn't like my FU trees, even though they don't affect her in any way. She just, she said that they're an eyesore. I said cow manure piled up against the fence was an eyesore, but she didn't agree. She said it's biodegradable. I said, so are my trees. So that was the last conversation I had with her, allegedly. Her husband has decided to stay out of it. He's like, I want nothing to do with this little cat fight here. I want nothing to do with y'all. He just goes in the house. Whenever anything comes up, he just disappears. So that is everything, hypothetically, that I have to tell you about my neighborhood right now. It's the neighborhood gossip. I really hope you enjoyed it. Thank you so much for being here. I hope you have a fantastic day, and I will see you again soon.